Well, have you ever noticed that when we say things about our bodies, it's mostly negative? When you are young, you worry that you're not thin enough, or tall enough, or attractive enough. And you experience all the bodily growing pains of puberty. And then you complain that you feel sick when you catch a cold or party too hard. You share your sports injuries or agonize about sore feet after a long day. Or if you wear, choose to wear fashionable or uncomfortable shoes. And as you get older, you talk about the aches and the pains that come with the sore knees or the back issues or the unexplained itch. In general, unless we are accomplished athletes, and sometimes even then, we tend to notice what is wrong with our body and not what is right. I think you could correct me, but I think it's, we would find it odd if someone were to express excitement when their body worked merely as we expect it to. Oh, look, I was able to chew my food. Wow, look at how easily I bend my elbows. But watch us express our discouragement when we can't find our reading glasses or have to ask someone to repeat themselves three times because we just didn't catch it. When we cut ourselves with a knife in the kitchen, we are unlikely to notice the ways our body is reacting to that injury in exactly the way it should, so that it will help heal itself from that slice. Because we are attending to cleaning up the blood and finding a band-aid and trying to numb the pain of the injury. And so we will not notice how rather amazing it is that our bodies can be injured and then can just heal. And so much of the advertising that surrounds us is designed to help us fix what is wrong with our human bodies. Buy this healthy food, wear this makeup to cover the blemishes, take these drugs to lose weight, subscribe to this exercise program to make your body stronger. And certainly there is a great deal of conversation about the effects that social media has on body image, particularly for teens. Well, over the past couple of years, I have had plenty to notice in this regard. You can imagine as medical appointments and hospital stays and chemotherapy and other treatments have all been centered around what was going wrong with my body, what was going wrong with my blood in particular. And mobility that I was able to take for granted just disappeared. And pain-free living that I mostly took for granted disappeared. And being able to ignore my physical needs disappeared. And I had to start thinking about my physical health all of the time. And while these thoughts are about trying to be as healthy as I can be under the circumstances, there is a clear and present focus on what is wrong with me. I think regardless of our age and our stage, it can be hard to appreciate anything about our physical selves. And the Christian tradition hasn't always helped that. Paul's letters often suggest a rejection of the physical world in favor of the spiritual realm, don't they? Sins of the flesh and all that. And when David was anointed king, didn't the prophet say, God doesn't look at the outside, but rather at what's on the inside? Well, we point at that, but it wasn't so much the Bible, actually, but Greek philosophy that created this influence on culture, including Christianity, through the teachings of teachers like Plato, who separated spiritual and material so significantly that he talked about our souls being imprisoned in our human bodies. Or the Stoic philosophers who were the first to teach about mind over matter. Perhaps these are things you have been taught. 
And this influence has been maintained in the Western world in lots of ways, even in the ways that we have valued the contributions that people make to the world. Think about blue collar workers as we talk about, talk about them, use their bodies to work. But white collar work workers use more just their brains. And which do we perceive as more prestigious? I can't help but notice when I think about the legacy of residential schools and the experience of children who were forced to participate in those systems, that there were countless ways that government officials and missionaries were able to justify the abuse of bodies in the misguided belief that it was good for their minds and their educations. And indeed, throughout history, sometimes there have been good intentions I think, for example, of the ways we have attempted to embrace inclusivity by downplaying the role of our physical selves. So we say various different abilities or skin colors or body types aren't what matters, but rather the spirit that makes us all the same, the spirit that dwells within. But there have been consequences to that, some more harmful than others. It's no wonder that we feel, if we do, feel ambivalent about these imperfect human vessels that we have. And yet, imperfect as they may be, without our bodies, we don't live. <laughs> we cannot live. Despite the science fiction ideas about an imagined future where our brains could be transported and transplanted into robotic bodies, and that urban myth about Walt Disney freezing his head. No, it is not true. It's through our bodies that we experience our existence. It's our body that gives us all of those senses of taste and touch and sight and sound and smell that bring joy and quality to our living. And actually, what we've been learning about diversity and inclusion is that denying our differences doesn't truly make people feel included, instead ignored. True inclusivity understands the importance of physicality, celebrates the differences, so that we're saying, I see you as you truly are, with abilities different from mine, or skin color different from mine, or body type different from mine. And I welcome and celebrate you, and I'm glad to know you as you are. And guess what? It turns out that we haven't been particularly fair to Paul when we suggested that he kind of started us on this negative body thinking in his biblical letters. Years of Christian interpretation did that. In fact, wasn't it Paul who used the metaphor of a human body to describe how church should be? And we read in Paul's letter to the Romans a clear connection between soul and body when he urges his friends to consider their bodies to be a living offering to God. Is a letter to the Corinthians. He says, your body is a temple where the Holy Spirit lives. And today we've heard the words of Psalm 139 in several ways that marvel in the way that we have been created. Fearfully and wonderfully made. A unique creation. A physical masterpiece, regardless of the ways we have tried to shame one another about it. And then there's Jesus, whom Christians proclaim as fully human. You know what that means? That Jesus stubbed his toe. <laughs> Jesus bit his cheek. He felt the kink in his back when he slept on the ground. The word Christianity uses for this is incarnation. That God dwells within human flesh. With all the miracle and complication and sometimes soreness that comes with being human. So being human can be holy. Human bodies can be holy. Our bodies are worth care and respect and love, 
but it may take some practice for us to see ourselves and one another that way. Can you imagine taking care of your body, not just to deal with its imperfections, but rather it's just because how we honor the source of our creation. Can you imagine embracing the body you have as a gift of God, just as you are? The psalmist said, who taught you to be ashamed? You are beautifully made. Paul says, don't squander the gift you've been given in this body. Jesus said to his friends, you are an extension. You are my body. Could we dare to believe that? Could we trust that this is so? Could we shift our, our criticism to reverence, to awe, to love, to find an acceptance of ourselves at every age and stage? It's part of the spiritual journey to which we are called. So wow, if I blush, it's because I'm human. Do you know we're the only species that does that? Did you know that our, thing, our tongue print, our tongue print <laughs> is unique to us? just like our fingerprints? Wow. And amazing. In the past one second, yeah, just one second, right there, one second, my body produced 25 million new cells. Pretty cool. God saw what had been made. And indeed, it was very good. Thanks be to God. Amen.